Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Dan, it's episode number two. Don't worry about it, too slow. Guys, it's a guest episode. I'm excited about this one, as always. But before we get into it, we got some sponsors. Before we get into even those, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. We're all on the bus. We're on the tea bus. Heading towards 2000. We see 2,000 patrons on the horizon. That's where we're going. It's not too late to get on board. And if you get on board, you can go back and you can listen to, what, a year and a half's worth of stuff? Almost two years years worth of a back catalogue of live stream episodes, which are a little bit wilder than the main episodes. You've got the bonus episodes, stand-up specials on there, ticket links. Not all. You can't go back to the ticket links because the events have already happened. But there is so much you can go back and listen to and see. Dan, the screen just went off. Anyway, that's patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. That's it now. We'll put the link in the description down below. Just join us. Join us. It's inevitable. We're sponsored by, first of all, NordVPN. Now, what is that? Is that a, is that, is that a Scandinavian paramilitary? It's not. It is. Here's the thing. You ever be online and you maybe go, do you ever go into Acosta for talk's sake and you go to join their Wi-Fi? And it's like, do you want to connect? And you say yes, and you give a fake email address. Of course you do. Do you ever worry who's looking at what I'm putting up here? You ever in an airport join the Wi-Fi network? Oh, I want to Google boobs. Is that going to be out there in the atmosphere? Am I going to get arrested for that? Not with NordVPN, you're not. Here's what you do with that. I don't know the ins and outs of this. All I know is they can change where you are. Internetly. They change your location. NordVPN gives you web security. If you want to act like you're in America, Paddy, do you ever, don't say anything, but do you ever be in London? No, do you ever be in Spain and you want to watch BBC iPlayer? And BB, no, but imagine you do. And then they say, you've got to be in the UK to watch this. What do you do? NordVPN, couple of clicks, you can tell them you're in Spain. You can watch fucking... Bing, all you want. You can watch what's a story in Balmori. You can access web content from all over the world. One click, auto enabled, zero click protection. Connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. They have over 5,000 servers in 60 countries. Very fast. NordVPN's the best out there. You can connect six devices to get security on them all. Uh, all major platforms, Windows, Androids, iOS, Mac. Access it from everywhere. Don't miss your favorite content when you're traveling abroad. One click, you open a map, you click on a location, and you're connected there in seconds. You can get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash tea with me to get a huge discount with free threat protection and they need to change that because saying free threat protection is difficult you get an additional one month for free it's risk free with no 30 day money back guarantee that's nordvpn.com slash tea with me I'll explain, I'll explain after we're also sponsored by Manscaped it's smooth sack summer you know that when we're coming into the summer sun it's a little bit warmer there you need to go from willy to bum you need to make it smoother and that's where Manscaped come in. They have uh, a discount as always, 20% off and free shipping. And don't worry about getting cut. Anti-snag technology. Don't worry about don't worry about someone looking at your balls and saying that they don't they don't look very toned. There's toner, there's cleanser, there's the lawnmower 4.0. It's waterproof too. You can get in a get you can get in a paddle and pool in your cousin's garden. Get in there. And shave your pubes. Be a weird move, but you can do it. They throw in two free gifts to their performance package. You get the boxers and a shared travel bag. Um, so if you're going on summer holiday this year, you can take all you need with Manscaped. Use code tea with me for twenty percent off and free shipping. Uh, smooth sack summer. Get on board or get left behind. Also, Dan, am I reading this right? The Shears two point a luxury nail grooming kit. Is that right? Yeah. Jesus. My nails are in a terrible, a, 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 a worse shape than, they're in bad shape. Anyway, Manscaped, use a code, tea with me for 20% off and free shipping. <gasps> My guest is a huge friend of the pod, a nice man. 
from West Belfast, Patrick McDonnell. Am I pronouncing that right? Patrick James McDonnell. Patrick James McDonnell. PJK, Patrick James Cairn McDonnell, but we'll leave out the Cairn just for the... That sounds like a, a, a PJK, law firm. PJK. I would love it. If if I ever got into a court case, would you represent me? PJK. PJK, rep, PJK Law. PJK Law. PJK Law. That would be hilarious. I think, honestly... You'd get away with you'd it. Get a, you'd get people away with it. Because you'd, you'd be entertaining. I think a talk entangles and then people just don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be very convincing. Yeah. My Irish teacher was called Jerry Adams. Not the Jerry Adams, it was his cousin. But he was called Jerry Adams. Which is quite funny when you said to people, my Irish teacher was Jerry Adams. Yeah. <laughs> but he said to my ma, he'll get an A. I can't even argue with him. I, he, when he talks, the oral... I don't even know if he's right or wrong. It's just it sounds really convincing. So you, I mean, he's probably to be an Irish teacher. He's obviously an expert in it. But you're probably telling him things, and then he's expert, like, ex prisoner, right. maybe one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he learn it? Are you, are you still? Are you? You're, do you, you can speak Irish, but like you wouldn't be. F- My fluency is terrible at the minute. Is what? Terrible. Oh. I thought you were that was Tr- Irish. Trebilla, <laughs> Trebilla. <laughs> is that Irish? No. No. <laughs> it's Trebilla. <laughs> there was a guy in West Belfast used to say things in a riddle. Right. And I think I made her turn it into him or my dad. What do you mean? He would say, like, just in everyday conversation, he would... Like, there was a... He had a 20p piece one day, and somebody had took, a, like, a hammer to it, and, like, a blade to it, and it was all mashed up and biced up, and he took it out, and he says to me, that's a paranoid 20p. <laughs> I wasn't going to argue with him, because I was sort of like... I don't know what a paranoid 20p is, <laughs> but I think what he meant to me, like it was fucked. Yeah, yeah. And then he would come out like on a sunny day, like the heat, and he would say, that's a great day for five aside, isn't it? Inside, 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 inside door football, class. <laughs> inside door football. On like the warmest day of the fucking year. <laughs> who are some of like, when you were growing up, like who are some of the great characters around the West that you can remember? Crazy Horse is probably the, the one which... Stands out in a sense. No, who was he? Crazy Horse was the one. He wore a cowboy hat and was bare chest. Stood around about Dunville Park, Lower Springfield. And all year round. All year round, like shirt off and a cowboy. The, I, all year round, like and he was called Crazy Horse. Like he would just, he jumped under the front of my dad's van one day on the Springfield Road. Like literally, we were stuck at the lights, and yeah. he just jumped on the hood of it, like. <laughs> Because somebody had shouted something from the back of it one day, you know, when they were working with the workers or something. Fucking right. crazy horse or something. Or whatever. <laughs> and he fucking seen the fan, he recognised it, and he jumped on it, and he had the two wipers. <laughs> so I said, my dad's going, get the fuck off the fan, you bastard. I told you a story about my dad driving into the guy's head. What? Um, that, that probably incriminates him at the start. We were booking tickets to go on the sea cat. Uh-huh. to go to the Isle of Man and my dad took me and my cousins down it had just opened Seacat had just opened and down at the docks there was two fellas middle of the day walking around Sailor Town blocked and I remember being a mid-conversation and then I just remember my dad turning the car towards the pavement and hearing a <laughs> and then hearing a guy go fuck 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 and look at his mate like that and there was a guy lying on the ground so I thought my dad saw a guy he didn't like mounted the pavement, drove into the guy's head and killed him. What happened was, two guys were staggering down the road, drunk. A fella fell onto the road. You know, like fell in stages because uh-huh. he was up block. My dad thought, if he falls where he's going to fall, I'll end up driving over his head. So my dad's like, the best thing I can do is, drive over his body. is, t- <laughs> is turn into him. And, and you know, maybe like knock him back upright. My dad turned the car. It was... It, it made sense the way he described it. He's like, if he falls, I won't be able I to stop. It. My wheel will go over his head. Yes, straight over the head. Whereas if I go that way, I might knock him back mid, up to his feet. M- mid fall, he'll yeah. bounce back up again. No, he was going about 40. Rubber. He was Does going about 40. <laughs> Does your dad know? Like, it's not like one of them punching bags you used to have, no, that sand on the bottom. It's not like, it's just, oh, fuck, thanks, mate. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> My dad, drive in, fell his head, poof, at the side of our angle, it was a white, uh, Renault McGann Scenic or something it was like a big Renault people carrier and the guy his mate goes oh fuck oh fuck and we sat in the back in silence and my dad goes now don't panic I just drove into a fella's head and we're like okay and I remember us shitting ourselves I think my dad was too that these, this fella was going to like 
pulled me out of the car for you know killing, the one, the killing his mate. The other one. Philip bounced up and went, "Thank you, mate," and walked on. <laughs> <laughs> he honestly, in his drunk logic, must have understood what my dad was doing. He's was like, your daddy drunk you, too? Gentle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, was going to say like the two. You are a fucking yes, mate. <laughs> I love that conversation you always see outside a bar. Two fellas. You're you're a fucking you're a, you're a good man, gentleman. I, I talk about it in the taxi. It's a bit I do. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I don't know. It's the difference between women and fucking men in the taxi. Right. So working as a taxi mom, you've seen it all the time. So basically, you would pull up four or five fellas and you would go, oh, for fuck's sake. And they would all get in the back and they're beating the fuck at each other. They're <laughs> fucking every shape. And they'd be sitting there. And next minute, you'd be driving down the road and one of them would be going, shut the fuck up. You shut the She and my shush me a minute. Driver, turn the fucking radio down. Radio's not on, mate. We'll turn the engine down. I'm about to make a fucking statement, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he would go, Paul, listen to me. Knife, shimmy, shut the fuck up. Paul, listen to me now. Driver, shush. I fucking love you like a bro. <laughs> you have a big nose, you're a fuck home, but I love you like a bro. And then Paul would go, I am your brother, Sean. Right? <laughs> no, it was these kind of conversations. And he would go, your missus is an ugly cunt, your kids have no ears, you know. It was, the fellas just abuse each other, right? And he goes to get out, they beat the fuck out of him, they pulled his trunks, like, completely off him, like, wedged them until they were ripped off, they were waving them around their head. He get out of the taxi and he go, that Sean man's a fat ugly bastard, I fucking, I fuck, and then he's an ugly cunt, but I love him, the bitch. Yeah. We should have all the girls get in the taxi and they're like, hi driver, stick on superstar. Ooh. And then your woman's like, hey Veronica, your wee dress is lovely, where'd you get your nails done? Your hair's gorgeous, no all this here. Yeah. As soon as she gets out, she goes, I hate that bitch Veronica. <laughs> they're so bitchy, yeah. every time. I think nowadays, I think fellas are nearly more bitchy. I think it's shifted it's a wee bit. wee bit. Well, yeah. they do wear shoes with no socks and get their eyebrows done more than their fucking waves, like. I think I might get mine done if it didn't worry that someone might take a picture and put it in Sunday What's this? Get my, I get my eyebrows done, I think. I don't have good eyebrows. No. What is good eyebrows? You have good eyebrows. They're a good shape, good colour. My eyebrows die halfway through. That there is like fucking 14 years of getting your eyebrows shaved at fucking halfway <laughs> in a fucking party at Turf Lodge, mate. Do you know that wasn't done by going to fucking... Super truck. What, 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 what's it called? Super truck. Do they do it? No. You gonna get your eyebrows done super truck, no? No. Oh. What is it? Eyes, eyes by... There's all different brow delicious and all this here, all these fucking... <laughs> delicious. This is <laughs> brows for less and all. Do you... Um, Weather like that makes, weirdly weather like that, like a sunny day, makes me want to go on holiday. But that defeats a purpose, because if it's good here, I don't know why I'd want to go away. Uh -huh. Are you going on holiday soon? Am I going? Yeah. No, because I didn't get the two passports for the two youngest ones. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it meant we couldn't go away. Well, we could have went away, but we would have had to leave. Yeah, I thought you would have had to get a British one. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a British passport. No, but I have, I have. I got one at the start. See, when Brexit became talked about, that it might be even an option, straight away I got one. A British passport? Yeah. Just to have the option of both. Always had an Irish passport, but I like having the option of both. I remember in school we were going skiing, and my ma would ref says he's not going on the British group passport. Right. So there was only me and a Canadian guy that had our own passports. <laughs> and when we got to Romania, they let me and him through. Right. And they kept all the elements behind. Right. And me and him ended up in the bar in the airport. Black. <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11 <laughs> years old. I think it was 14 or something. <laughs> but all your man served was fun. It was like, when I say a bar, it was a guy with a wee cart. Right. And he's just like, here. It was, just, it was like in cartons. Yeah. <laughs> like sukis. <laughs> Is... Um, is Crazy Horse still going? No, no, he's dead a long, long time. Long gone? Crazy Horse, and then you had Anthony Gaga, which was Anthony for Seth. <laughs> Anthony Gaga sounds like a Lady Gaga tribute act. He, he's related to her. I think he's like a third cousin. <laughs> oh, <he's not. laughs> but Anthony, Anthony didn't. Because her surname. <laughs> her name's Lady for Seth. <laughs> She's originally from Turf Laws. Well, her dad was, but he, he went on the run. He was in the Ra. And then 
Look, it worked out for her. Why is he called Anthony Gaga? Obviously, because he's a wee bit slow. Well, Anthony's not slow by any means. He used to sell telegraphs about the town. So he would have, you always seen him with a big bunch of telegraphs right. under his arm. Yeah. And he didn't speak. Right. He, he, Anthony had a problem speaking, obviously. So he used to just go, <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> that was all he'd done every time you passed him. He went, yup. <laughs> and, but a massive, like, you could not say anything bad about Anthony because everybody loved him. Right. But he sold that many tallies, people reckon he had a million pound. Like. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He, he, he was stationed money in the park and in his front garden. And there, there was a story going about when they moved out of Turf Lodge and somebody dug up the garden and it was 55 grand and fucking 50 piece. Do you know what I mean? That was the kind of stories about him because he didn't have nothing to spend the money on. Yeah. Yeah, he, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, he lives in Ballycastle now, apparently. That's where the family moved to. I um, I remember my dad telling me, speaking of things being dug in gardens, that he'd kill people. No, that he had buried. Was it one of the your titty bury your mom for the thing? <laughs> <laughs> your dad on weekend the Bernie's that guy. <laughs> you thought he was okay. It was your dad doing the voice? Your mom sitting in the back of the car and your dad wee ropes left her. Thanks, mate. <laughs> your mom's now buried in the fucking garden in Hollywood. <laughs> my dad told me that. They had these motorbikes back in the day um, that were like scrappers and the needed to get rid of them. They were bro- broke instead of like paying, or whether you had to pay to get rid of them or you had to take them really far away to sort of dump them. It was easier to bear, uh, just dig, dig and bury these bikes in the garden. And I remember him telling me this, said I was about 40 years ago. And, and they were fortunate. Can we dig it up and I can go on it? That, that was my logic at the time. You know, it's like if they're there. Let's dig them up, and I, I can, I Did can. Did you hear the start of it? There were scrappers. No, I know, but in my head, I'm going. Uh, there's motorbikes. There's in motorbikes the are for me. That's like something from American Pickers, isn't it? Yeah, I never seen it. What is that? The two guys in America go about looking for stuff. And oh, like they hear about scrapyards. They hear, they hear about an Indian motorcycle in Boston, and they go to Boston and dig it up. Oh yeah, yeah. I see shows like that. Like I started watching one on Netflix, which is about uh, an island near Alaska that apparently the pirates stashed all this gold on Oak Island. I don't know. And the curse of Oak Island, is it all? I don't know. But they said that they were going to go and dig it up. The mayor was like, we're struggling here for infrastructure and all that sort of thing, so we're going to dig it up. And he brought over a team of like the world's best like gold diggers and that sort of thing. But then I read... Just load the ex-footballers' ways. <laughs> 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 Just all these mean girls getting off with fucking pink fluffy shoes on. <laughs> And they said that this this is fake. I read that this is fake. Adak Island. That's what that's what it is. Oh, it's a different one. Then. Adak Island. So they said some uh, pirate, but because they found gold on it, so that I mean it is true. But it's, the island's fucking massive, uh, and I just shows like that. I Go wish on to I know. wish they were true. I don't like watching. I hate watching stuff. Like see when Game of Thrones was out, I didn't watch it because I can't wait until next week. To see now that something. definitely isn't true. Do you know what I mean? Game of Thrones. Well, it definitely wasn't real. I told her she was being real, and you were like, "That's why I can't watch Game of Thrones." Just seems a wee. How bit. do you know it wasn't real? <laughs> well, I suppose. Now, the thing about shows like that is, I really liked. Um, what do you call the one where? Ah, uh, it's like the the main show of these shows, the the, the allotment not allotments storage wars storage wars and storage hunters. Yeah. You know the guy, Sean Kelly. But I shared a taxi with him. Yeah. He used London. to be a taxi driver. Huh? He used to be a taxi driver. He's a comedian now. Yeah, does stand up. And I was on his flight, and we had the same agent at the time. And mm-hmm. it was weird because he looked after all these like comedians, and then the guy from Storage Wars, who's based in America. And I introduced myself because he was waiting for a at the baggage thing, and he had a crutch or something. And I said, "Here, do you want to handle that?" I said, "We actually have the same agent." Introduced myself, shared a taxi, and then he said, uh, "I'm coming to your show tonight." He goes, "I'm going to come to the show." It's him and his wife, and he just that was the last interaction I ever had. With him. Did he come to the show? No. no. Did he try and say the story? You know? I think he just went round <laughs> looking for looking at shows like blindfolded, you know. And they just opened the curtain. He's like, "Nah, that's not him," you know, lifting the shutter up. <laughs> Man, but. look at this. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it's uh, shows like that. I hate scripted reality things. I'd yes. Like it to just be even if you find nothing. The first the couple end. is fine for me, but then you yeah. realize that it's set up. Yeah. And you're like, now when you were trying to get passports for your kids, did you try any? Be honest, did you put any posts out there? No. I know anyone that works in no. a passport office, none like that? No. 
Because if I had do. a goddamn, that's like you were talking. It was going to cost me thousands to take these fuckers away on holiday. Where were you? Where Where would you have been? Going? America, probably for two weeks. Where? New Jersey, just to see family and stuff. You live. How long do you live in America for? On and off over three and a half years. So it was sort of like there for so. I was illegal. I had to come back and forth. Right. <laughs> you cracked really quickly there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's well documented that it was illegal. Um, I remember you saying to me, "Did you say about America that spa are there is Wawa?" Wawa. Yeah. And I was like inundated with people dead on. And since then, everywhere I go, I see like articles about you know there was the a Wawa. shooting at the Wawa and all. <laughs> and you thought it was a wind up? Did you're making it up? New Jersey, New Jersey. And you worked in a fairgrounder, didn't? You? No, well, it's a boardwalk. Boardwalk. Andrew's brother owns actual like fairground raids and like games and stuff like that. Like what? Like whack a mole? Like bust a balloon with darts and throw the ball no, in the bucket. Be honest, different country, no one's going to see it. Are any of those rigged? Of course. How? Well, the pocket thing is rigged. In what do you mean the bucket thing? The bucket, so you'll have a, a bucket, like a big plastic bucket, and you throw balls in it, and you have to get two balls in the bucket. Yeah. So when that's put on, I ain't going to get shot first. So when that's put on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be one of those water cannons. <laughs> 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 the carnies is the column of it. They're actually I've never met anybody that works in them fairgrounds over in America that wasn't a drug abuser. Right. <laughs> so see when people say carnies get a bad name for fucking good reason. It's like the must go in the orphanages and fucking young offenders homes and go, I'm looking a few apprentices. Because every one of them was fucking mental or fucking some, like something seriously. I didn't meet any of them that was like, right. yeah, no, I studied law for a couple of years and then I gave it up. <laughs> in the Do you know what I mean? There was nobody, it was. <laughs> nobody and, shouldn't have not and been there. And brother met me and went, Paddy would be brilliant at this. <laughs> Which was strange too when I got in there. I was like, why did You fit I? it in too well. <laughs> yeah. It was like. My angle in it was how I got people in was I used to do keepy uppies with the balls. Right. And everybody walking past us would go, wow, look at that guy with his feet. Right. It was keepy uppies with a tennis ball. Right. And they all came over and as soon as they came over and I was like, do you want to win a fucking teddy bear for a fiver? I'm on fuck. Right. Right, you know. What age were you doing this? I went over there at the very start. I think it was 18, 19, 19 maybe. Right. Working on the boardwalk, working doing like the, the fairground kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Just working names. When I first went over, I didn't actually work in the actual games. Doing that, I right. was uh, I collected the money, right, of all of them, and then run about. So I just run about with a full rig, full rig wanger, and what the big football sacks, full football sacks, right, shorts and tap, and I used to stuff the money down the sacks and then run up and down the boardwalk all day, right. So it was fit as fuck, right. But nobody thought. He's got about fucking 20 grand on a sack. So what would happen? They would make money for a few hours. Because it's all cash in hand. So I would go, go pick it up and take it to the boss. Write it down and then bring it to the main boss. Right. Now, when you say the games are rigged a wee bit, I see the thing. You can't win it, but very, very, very hard odds. But how do you make it harder? Well, say the plastic bucket. Yeah. You put it, when it's getting screwed till the thing, to put like a tennis ball at the back of it so it makes the back springy. Mm. So when you're trying to throw the ball in, you're throwing a hard baseball into a plastic bucket and it's springing back out. Right. But if you hit the rim, it'll stay in. So you have to divert or spin it. But you can't hit it from... If you throw it from the side and hit the side, it'll stay in. But that was one of the rules you weren't allowed to have. And there was <laughs> distance and stuff. It was yeah, hard yeah. to do it, but you could do it. Did you get in any, like, uh, scuffles or trouble loads, doing that? Loads. Loads. Of what, people want the money back or... Yeah, what, what would tend to happen was... Say there was a load of black guys used to come down for Philly, and they weren't, they were fucking tough guys, like big tough guys. The next minute, so they didn't like to get beat, but they would come down to the shore with all the money for holiday, right? And the first day, two of them would be out, you know, and they're walking down. Next minute, you call them in and you get them in, and your man's trying to win a big tally bar. And the next minute, he knows he's give you the four hundred dollars, right? And right. then he's like, Hey man, I want that money back, and you're like, You can't, you've yeah. already fucking played it, like, yeah, you know. So he would fucking start giving you a bit of shit. And he's like, I'll bring my homies back. We come back here. I'll shoot this place up. And I went, you know my fucking uncle was in the rat. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll go, here, He thought you meant the Wawa, the Wawa. My oh, I didn't. Was, getting the job was, on there. I was all right. I'd get in the fight with a lot of Canadians. Right. French Canadians. 
Specifically. <laughs> Atlantically. Wankers. <laughs> what was what were they doing? What was wrong with them? They were just miserable cunts. <laughs> like genuinely are miserable. Like they would count out quarters to you. Right. And they would have one go and they'd be like, it would take twenty minutes to get them to throw a ball. Right. And 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 maybe the kid wanted to do it, and the dad was like trying to shut him up. So the man, and the dad, would have bum bags and fucking Moses sandals on. They'd be like, oh, don't you, 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 and uh, but they were miserable, f- and then they would go, this is it, this is it, and you were right. going, that's fucking it. The child <laughs> threw two balls, he fucking missed half. Ah, you didn't win, fuck all. We want the titty bear. No, fuck you and your teddy bear. You're not getting it. You have to get two in the bucket. <laughs> how did you? Uh, how did it catch up with you being out there? What do you mean? So you said you were there off and on, and you would like to. You loved it there. Like, would you? You would have stayed there. Yeah, I would have stayed, but uh, apparently hitting the policeman's not a fucking great thing to do. No, no, not anywhere. Not anywhere, especially not there at the year after September 11th. So, so you got into a fight? Bit of a trouble with the policeman. We'll not go into specifics because yeah, it's a terrible salty ocean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was it was it his fault? Or yours? I don't want to go into it. A fight normally, both there's two sides to every story. Yep. And then there's a the truth in the middle. Right. So I can't comment on it because I'm one side of that story. Right. Gotcha. He has his. I was wrong. If I look back. Yeah. I shouldn't have done what I done. But. Right. And when you take the kids, will will you eventually do that? Yeah, but we're back. We're back. Yeah. Cause oh, okay. this brother now still lives there. Like, oh, you know. okay. But we wanted to. T- we've only took them back in the winter. We were down in Florida one time and we went up during winter, but we want to take them and let them see. Because it's like five mile long boardwalk, beaches, yeah. all the games, the fur rings and all sorts. See, when, when I hear people talking about living in New York, they're like, oh, it's, you know, for rent to live in Manhattan or anywhere slightly close to it. It's crazy and they're in this box room and all that sort of thing. And then I've heard people say, oh, they live in New Jersey and commute. And they're like, yeah, because it's cheaper. What do you get for your money out there? And it looks cl- like I'm been. In, I've been in New York a little bit. Well, times, actually, where, where Paul is, it's the most southern part of New Jersey. For, I don't, how far away is that from New York? Four hour, no, three and a half hours maybe. Oh, right, okay. So it's the most southern part of New Jersey, but right. you couldn't commute from there to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get what they mean. Like you could go into New York. Andrea's uncles and all live in New York. Yeah. And Elizabeth and Camden, her daddy used to live in Elizabeth. We were there. So yeah, it, I could see how people do it because, like in New York, what you would spend in a month, yeah, do you know what I mean? And rent would be like six months in New Jersey. Is it like, and is there like soprano guys running about there? Oh, I completely. Did you ever get into? Did you ever? There was a guy who was the main, apparently mafia dude in southern New Jersey, and he owned a, a cheesesteak place. Yeah, yeah. And I got to know his son very well. Right. So I didn't pay for cheese sticks for a couple of months. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> no, no, it is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was all right in our books, you know what I mean? We Did played pool and I, I sorted out something that happened like a fight. Right. And the son told his dad and his dad was like, he's all right. You know what I mean? Would, now, let me ask you this. Would you have, if, if the dad had come up to you and said, like, I like what you've done there, free cheese sticks for life, would you have joined the mob? Definitely not. Are you sure? I couldn't have been in it. Well, you got to have Italian blood. Have Italian, huh? But what if he said to you? What if he goes? I could only offer him a bit of Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> My great, 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 great granddad's from Switzerland. That was all I could offer you, mate. I know the mountains are the same, but it's not, you know, I'm good with a Toblerone, but not with a oh, fucking but what Biscoff if he, biscuit. What if he wants to make an accept? What if he goes, no, oh, Benny. He didn't talk like that. No, he did. He goes, <laughs> he didn't talk like Willie Thompson. <laughs> he goes, Paddy, I like what you're doing. I want you to. I want to make you the first Irish mob guy. Set you up suits. You don't have to do I any of the bad stuff. It. You wouldn't do it. No, because I've watched every mob movie, <laughs> and everybody ends up the same way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think if I'm going to get buried somewhere for doing something wrong and getting shot, I'd rather it done here. Do you know? There's more chance of family getting the body back and all. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Wouldn't want it to be a Netflix special. First Irish mob man from West Belfast. 
Nobody knows where he is. <laughs> like, where's Wally? Where's Paddy? <laughs> <laughs> There's people walking into Mafia going, where the fuck's Paddy, that kid? Jerry Adams doing benefit nights in Philadelphia for it. Paddy was one of the best comedians I ever knew. <laughs> but it's your old Irish teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not the real Jerry Adams. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk proper Irish, but his Irish was a great. Was now found it's now the way to go forward. Nah, that, no, but uh, like mafia would screw the fuck out of you. Yeah, just from what you know, I've read a lot of books about it and stuff over yeah, there. Like the Irish mob were the worst compared to the the Italian mafia before that. Right. Like the Irish mafia in New York and all, they were the ones that done all. Whitey Bulger was he was Irish. Well, he not, was an Irish. Well, yes, Irish yes, Irish background. Yeah, but like. If you go into Hell's Kitchen and all in New York, like them guys, they were doing all the sort of bootlegging, all the bars and stuff like that. And then apparently it was the CIA or FBI fucking helped get rid of them and put the mafia in. Oh. Because we stayed in Hell's Kitchen like, one of the last times we were there. And it's dead on now. Like all, oh, it's all Manhattan now, basically yeah. is. is. Yeah. But I would love to like, well, I wouldn't. But like we stayed, me and Mike went to LA years, how, how many years ago? 2016 we were we could have driven about 20-30 minutes to Compton uh-huh. and I'm always like I'd love to just drive around just through it just to see see there's a lot of them like people would say things about certain areas and then you go to it like That's I remember I fill it Philly when we were in Philly I remember the guys that brought me in till North Philly says we're putting the window up because I've been to if that they fucking see you well I went over to do a gig there and the guy running it Brian from here um, was driving me around and he went do you want to see something like shocking I was like yeah and he drove through it's like a whole area I can't remember what it's called but they must have just said to all the drug addicts and homeless like this is where you stay live. here don't go out of here do whatever you want here it was the it was the wildest thing I had ever seen and all we did was drive through it without stopping and like Jaw. terrifying yeah and do, do you know what the scariest part of it was you would see all this and then you'd see someone out walking with a pram. And that with that like broke my heart. Do you know that like Somebody's there's bringing families living there too? Yeah. You know? Does they have to? They have to. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. The poor parts of America are really poor. Like, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. There's actually a lot of sayings come from America like people like he's piss poor. Yeah. Or he hadn't got a bucket to pay or a pot to piss in. Yeah. That comes from America. Right, right. And the, the, we're at Pally Fact. Here we go. Get it on the screen. <laughs> screen now. Is the screen only installed since I came in yeah. for the Get Pally Facts? So do you have it or no, Pally Atro? And by the way, the fucking famine thing, there's some fucking doctor. In the, oh, no, no, no. In no. the Glasgow, in the Glasgow University has fucking come out and said. After you, your statement? Like genuinely said, he's fucking 100% right. <laughs> no. Get a picture. No. Can you get a picture up of the statues in Dublin of the famine? Yeah. The, the, get them up, the size of them. There are statues. Listen, I know exactly the ones listen. you're talking about because our hotel a couple of weeks ago was, was right beside those. Yeah, 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 those. So you're telling me. There's a doctor. There's a, that they, that they're, they're made to scale. Yes. Paddy. Can you the go dog's get, about six can, foot. No, it's not. That, that's actually, that's a chihuahua. That's an Irish Chihuahua. <laughs> so it is. You're tell you're telling me that's made the scale. Yes. And that and this is your right. So your fa- your fact was people in Ireland have got no, smaller no. Yes. since the famine. Look up this doctor. I forget. I'll get her name for you. Doctor in the Glasgow University, and she came out and says what I said was. For- she a, a a doctor came out. And I said, don't know what she's a doctor in. She may be a doctor in sure death. Sure, <laughs> And she, but she's come out and said. I'm putting the my Irish weight people, behind. yes, and there's a thing. Paddy McDonald is right. Uh, yep. This will be great. What's your name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me the message. You can't look for it. <laughs> what have you like? What other Paddy faxes have been, and is there much blowback to them? You know what I mean. The one that I've got the much shit about is uh, painters or drug dealers. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the one that's got me in the most trouble. Yeah. But sold the most tickets. Right. But do you, and do you think painters? a lot of that is painters, right? Who go in, right. in their hundreds till yeah. the show. Do you think they're planning something? I think they're trying to sell me something. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, he's on these lads. That's, like, wouldn't it be a gag if there was just a big fucking meeting of, like, mafia painters? 
<laughs> they all turned up in their overalls. The painters versus the mafia. Um, what were some of your, you know, talking about taking the kids to the States, what were some of your first memories of holidays, whether they were here or abroad or when you were a kid, what was the first? We we had the caravan in Carnlock, so I remember going there quite a bit from when I was no age. Um, were you buzzing to go? Or you, you I know you loved it. it, you loved it. But I uh, remember going there, and then I remember my dad taking us to Ibiza when we were like four. <laughs> Lads holiday? Lads holiday. <laughs> I, I knew nothing about like music scenes or anything like that yeah. back then, but and he hired out like a convertible Jeep and all, and I just remember that, and water parks, and falling in the pool but and was, drowning when I was four. Was that the kind of place it was, it is now? Oh, well, it was San Antonio, so I think that's right. where the nightclubs is, but... It was a family holiday, just yeah. like when we were kids. Because I, I never associate that with the, probably such a small part of it. Yeah. It's like wild and the rest is just like a normal, yeah, normal place, to yeah, go. place to go. I remember going, one of my first holidays I remember is Ackle, Ackle Island. Loved Down it. Down off the coast of Ireland? Yeah. Loved right. it. We went there a load of times. There's nothing on it, like. There's nothing there. Is that why you like raffling so much? Yeah, I like islands. I'm an island boy. I just like islands. You live because in one? You may, <laughs> yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't even realise that. I know, oh, 100%. When you say to people, and they're like, I've always wanted to go to an island, and you went, <laughs> you're on one. <laughs> we're, we're, no. No, we're, we're attached to England. No, we're not attached to England. We're yeah. really not. You, on, but I like places like that because it makes you make your own fun. Right. Like, we used to go all the cousins, all the aunties, all the uncles, and, and stay in a caravan, and it was those nights where. That's how our Freda snow came about. Pardon? Like all family going to one island to live like. You know, it's only your cousin from the front shit. That's how arthritis started. Oh, aye. with all the diseases and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like gout no. and stuff like that. Inbreeding, Shane. Right, 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 right. Right. But we were just going for like rounders. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you just called it? <laughs> yeah, everyone got around. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> well, I loved it. It was just... No, I get that, do, I get that, yeah. And it was it was like you were doing... Like, I take my kids to the caravan now, and they're like, there's nothing to do here. Yeah. And you're like, go and, do, go and jump on Make the, something go to do. Go and jump off the harbour. Yeah. Go and do this, go and do that. Yeah. Like, what did you do when you were here? Well, not going to that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you did, you found your own fun. And you were kids. happy with, like, very little. Yeah, you know? and have you seen somebody walking past the caravan, you went out and introduced yourself to it, but the yeah, kids yeah. were like... I was trying to find him on Snapchat there. I remember a picture from, I think it was Ackle, where we went like to a nearby town or something like that. And my dad must have taken it. It's me, all, me and all my cousins sitting on a curb eating fish suppers. And it's such a brilliant photo. And it probably tasted the best. I remember the best. when we were in the caravan, there would have been, like my ma was one of seven. Right. And maybe five of her brothers and sisters turned up with all their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it was just, Curtains put across and kids just sleeping everywhere. Yeah, yeah. The and then the men would come back late at night and they would just bring in five chips. Right. And we would all already been trying to put me to, put us to sleep. Yeah. Next minute the curtain got pulled open and they were like, here. And you were getting a, a handful of chips and a bit of bread and it was the nicest. Yeah. And a wee tiny bit of Coke and you were like, yeah. no. <laughs> 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 but you, were, you thought it was the... The nicest yeah. chip body you ever had no, in your life. A hundred percent. And then when all the men fell asleep on the thing, we all used to wait until they get lifted up and put on their bed because all the money had fell out of their pockets. <laughs> and sharing like a big two litre of coke. Coke guy. Between twelve cousins, everyone just getting a big swig of it. I remember my granddad made stew in the caravan one time and he put bananas in it. He was that drunk. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he was peeling every spud there was in the, the caravan and then I got to the bananas and he peeled them too and fucked them in. <laughs> I, I, I loved stuff like that. Like, the, again, photos. Like, my dad used to always, always have all these f uh, films that develop in the chemist. And at the time, you're like, there's photos of everything. See, now we have a room full of just all these me memories. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And, like, back then, and the gear you were wearing was rare. Like, I, there's a photo of me sleeping. Not much has changed then. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there's a picture of me sleeping on the floor of the caravan in Ackle wearing this Thunderbirds jumper, big bowl haircut, and like I just it was just 
it re- this does make me sound too old. It just was a different time. Yeah. Like I'm talking about game of rounders. Yeah. You could have played a game of rounders for six hours, seven hours. Yeah. You played rounders. We played hurling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rounders was rounders is still one of the best games yeah. out. Rounders Britain. is actually, I think it's the national sport of Ireland. Google it. Google it. I swear, I swear there's something in that. There's something <laughs> in that. National sport of Ireland, rounders. I don't think it's a sport. No, it's not. Why? Hold on. Why are we also all studying this as if it's going to say it? No, rounders is not one of the main ones. Uh, yeah, National sport in Ireland. I'll fucking Google it. Your computer doesn't work. <laughs> you have fucking no technology and you don't even <laughs> fucking know how to use it. <laughs> what was the first foreign holiday you went on? Um, I think Spain was the first foreign one. Oh, Ibiza. And then I remember going to Bulgaria when we were eight and that was great. Because it was still... Sunny Beach? Sunny Beach. I've never been of her. Or Golden Sands. I can't remember but it was one. I think it was Sunny Beach. But my ma says there was like a sport place on the, on the well, the s- canoes and all stuff like that. And every day I would disappear. She would see me climbing up this wall and looking over this wall. And my ma was going, why is he so interested over? And over the wall was fucking... Nudie Beach? Aye. Uh, <laughs> and I was perving my girvin. It was a bit <laughs> fucking sad. I was like... Mm. This is so bad, right? There's a photo of me in Tenerife. And I've said... Nothing to my, on? I've said to my dad... No, no. I said to my dad, get a photo of, pretend you're taking a photo of me, but there's boobs behind me. And Did you ask him to do it? Yeah, he fucking did it. He didn't need to ask twice. <laughs> fucking right. There's a photo and I had to crop myself out of it. I had to crop the woman out of it, but it's me at about six or seven, my big buck teeth like this. <laughs> and in the background. <laughs> now you can't see her boobs and it's her from the back. So you, you now have a photo of it, just a woman with boobs, but you're yeah. cut out of the photo? Yeah, I'm out of it. You're um, saying that like you don't? It? it sounds like your dad got the photo, man. We'll cut you in earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tenerife, like, the buzz of going on a foreign holiday was the best. Like, the night before, two days before. I remember fucking, they had a video of my dad had a big fucking camcorder, it was headset. And they had a video of me drying my hair and with the hairdryer, waiting to go to the airport. And that song was out, shake your head. And I was singing it with the brush, drying <laughs> right. my hair. And he had a, it was a fucking cringy fucking video. Like. Now, what's it like now going on holidays with the kids that scared me we went to Puerto Rico a couple of years ago and it was where's that Spain Grand Canary or somewhere like right. that right and uh, Padraig and Evian just and Andrew was pregnant with Blanet how pregnant was tough well it was a couple of months right and because uh, Blanet was born in January this would have been July and it was tough seeing the two youngest ones now like we were in Seaford Butterfly Garden yesterday yeah and I was ready for fucking Graham's home where? Graham's is home. What's that? It used to be a fucking asylum. Right. I was ready for it. That's a saying in West Belfast. Right. <laughs> but uh, just fucking the two youngest, like, there's fucking mental running off them. I don't know if it's because I'm older now or that I take part in people growing up now. Is it because they're constantly on the go? It's just non-stop. And then I says, Mum will leave here and we'll go and do the, paddle, the, the big swans in Newcastle. Fuck me. What a disaster. Why? The two-year-old was bouncing about the boat. I, have you ever fucking used them fucking paddle swans? Not in years, like. Well, never have I. I don't fit in them. Right. <laughs> and you're, you're trying to paddle them, and this is all squashed up. And they're bouncing up. The two-year-old's bouncing about, and Andrew has the fucking thing on a lead, like, holding her, and she's jumping from front to back. The thing on a lead? <laughs> it was a fucking disaster, I swear to God. And it was warm, and then people were going, there's your mom Polly, and it was like, oh, for You're f- sweating. Yeah, and it just wasn't a good look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't wait to get off, like, and it was 12 fucking Boston pounds to make a cunt of yourself. <laughs> That's how it's advertised. <laughs> By the, the National Trust or the RSPCA or the YMCA or whoever fucking runs it, I don't know. <laughs> it is the YMCA. It is. The Padlet Swans in Newcastle is run by the YMCA. Google it. <laughs> fucking Google it. I have a feeling out all of them, for some reason, this one's going to be true. <laughs> The YMCA run the Palace ones. Just a policeman and Indian and a cowboy. The, used to be the Ra and then the changed. <laughs> we can't do it no more. Palace and Swans, Newcastle. Just write YMCA after that, then. YMCA. 
No. <laughs> Cheap hookers in fucking Newcastle. Oh, there is actually something about it. Anyway, um, I don't think I'm going to do a foreign holiday with the kids for a couple, good couple of years. It's just not. It's not going to be enjoyable. It's the plane. The, in the heat. It's the plane. Trying to no, the plane's hundred percent. Is it? Oh, I full bottle of cow paw. Bump. They're <laughs> out the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If you're booking the flight, give me the real. Here's the thing. Here's what I want: the real advice. Right. The real advice. This is what you do. Father to father. Many kids. I've got one. I've got one about to arrive. Right. And there's only you and your. You don't have two waves. You only have one. Just one. Right. So, there's three seats. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The other seat. Don't book it across. The wee fucking aisle. So don't have. Don't get four in a row. Because there's three connected. And yeah. one's going to be separate. So you're going to be stuck beside somebody over there. Right. right. That seat there, book at the back of the fucking plane and book the one with the kids up the front. Right. Do shifts. Don't fly anywhere over four hours. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And do shifts. Right. And what you do is you say to her, you do the first shift flying over and I'll do the shift flying back. Right. right? On the way back, make a cunt of it. <laughs> After the first 10 minutes, nip the kids, make them cry like fuck, right? Your missus will be scundered because they're her kids. Yeah. And she come up and go, I'll take them, Shane, just go to the back of the plane. And when you go to the back of the plane, you've had a good flight over and a good flight back. 10 minutes of maximum of nastiness well taken off. And you'd be at the back sleeping and she'd be up there fucking trying to keep two kids contained. And what about like... When we're out there, say we're on the beach and I just want Alcohol. Up. Best thing to do, give the kids alcohol. <laughs> and like, are you talking like hard alcohol or more, more an alcohol pot? Whatever gets them drunk. Like a blue wicket. Whatever gets them drunk. <laughs> Fat frogs is a good one because it looks like juice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Get them juiced up, Alex. Because what happens is when you get that drunk, you end up falling asleep. Yeah. And the kids came back from Puerto Rico and it was all-inclusive. They had to go to know, AA. I don't know what it is about all-inclusive, but people from here think when I book all-inclusive, I'm entitled to fucking 20 <laughs> pieces of toast in my breakfast. I'm entitled to 40 fucking eggs, even if I don't eat them. Yeah. I don't know. You see people walking down 100%. with a, a mountain of food and you're going... Why? Yeah, yeah, Why? 100%. Same and with the cruise, people doing a cruise. And they'll lift, they'll lift a full bowl of fruit and bring it down and take one bite of it and go, I don't like grapefruit, don't even know why I lifted it. <laughs> what a fucking waste. I'm like that with alcohol when I go away. <laughs> right. My kids don't see me drinking here. Right, yeah. So when we book a holiday, like that, they, they came back from the last holiday and their granny says, well, what was the most memorable thing about the holiday? And I was like, daddy drinks at 10 o'clock in the morning as soon as the bar opens. <laughs> And will you pace it? Will you go easy? Not a fucking chance. <laughs> and the thing about it, your mom was going to I me, mean, you can't, like, I was going to give me two beers. Where was it? Uh, Puerto, Puerto Rico? Rico. And he was going, no, you, and I went, give me two beers. And it was a glass of beer, it wasn't even, so he was setting them up and I was going like that. And he was going, and I was like, well, you better give me six. Do you know what I mean? You better just load me. He's like, where's the rest of the stag do you? No. I, no. I am the stag do. I've paid for this. I'm, she's not drinking. She's pregnant. I'm fucking... Like, technically, I've worked it out that I should be drinking for the two of us. Yeah. And there's two kids and they're not drinking that. Well, not until we go to the beach. But... So you'll need to give me a lunch of fucking drink for him. But... <laughs> but it, it was like, the English were all sitting there. And I started putting shots until the paints because they weren't strong enough. Right. And uh, the next minute, the English were going to me, what, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, the West is an Irish thing. Like, yeah. Fucking double fogger in the paint. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> Boom. You know what I mean? So the next minute, you had all these English guys capping me and fucking putting their spurs <laughs> all in the paint and going, fucking ratting, Nick. And I'm just going, hope you're not drinking fogger. And I'm like, no, just paints. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Oh. I don't know. I think that would be that would be my worst fear would be being hungover abroad with the kids in the heat. I think what stopped me actually fucking properly drinking was going to Turkey and drinking raggy. What's that? It's like a patching. Like uzo. It's like uzo only. Uzo. It's the Turkish sort of yeah. But well, where's like uzo from? Greece. Greece. Oh, so it's probably the same sort of thing. What is raggy? Raggy. 
Right. And you fucking wrecky the house when you fucking drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you drink it on holiday? Oh. With the kids? I used to drink faga like straight. And mm. uh, we went to a restaurant with a Turkish guy who we got the apartment off. And he sat a glass down in front of me and I thought it was faga and I knocked it. But it was wrecky for all the fellas at the table. <laughs> and he was sort of like... <laughs> That's not it. When he's making that face, that's not good. I, so like, oh, in, in any I, language, I woke up and the next day at about twelve o'clock, and my sister was with us, and she just came in the room and went, "Yeah," and I was like, "What?" And she was like, <laughs> "Like what?" And she went, "What did you not do?" And I was like, "No, seriously." Like, and she was like, "So the fucking just some of the fucking stuff." Apparently, I was like demanding a disco, <laughs> right? And all the kids would get sent home with Matt and she, or Jackie, stayed with me. Right. To make sure I was all right. But she's like, you were demanding a disco. We went to disco and you started pulling all the Union Jacks down. It was all English people. <laughs> and uh, and uh, doing push-ups in the middle of the dance floor with, on my knuckles and all, challenging everybody. And <laughs> they found a Celtic tap and that calmed me down. I sat at the table with a Celtic tap. And I was like just a drink, like, drinking pints of faga. And... <laughs> Everyone in the town, <laughs> all the Turks were calling me Rambo, right? Because <laughs> Jackie says I tied the Sally tap room here, and they were calling me Rambo as I was standing there, and all the English were calling me Peggy. So they thought I was a gypsy. So, <sighs> and I came home and I was sick, and Jackie said I was sick. We just bought the beds, like literally just bought the beds, and I was sick everywhere. Yeah. And my ma and Andrew had to hold my head up all night while yeah. I was being sick. And the next day, Andrew just left me with all the kids, and I was like, Whoa. "Oh!" And every time I took a drink of water, it was full. Right. What do you mean? Like I get drunk again. It was like diluting it in my system or something. I fucking was drunk again, and I was going, "I'm drinking fucking water, and I'm getting drunk." It's, it's like your mom with shampoo in the shower, and you're it out of the shower. I was like, and I went, "I'm never drinking like that again." It was the worst. I think it was alcohol poisoning. Cause I said that two weeks ago. That statement. I'm never drinking again. I went out day drinking. I uh, haven't done it in so long. Don't really what age are you now? 34. You're getting to that age? Yeah. You'll get till my age and you go, oh, fuck me. But see, if you'd, have, if you'd have said to me before I did it, here's what you're going to do. As in, he, so... You'd never plan to do that? I plan to go out for a couple of ciders, maybe, take it easy. But the, the, my mates have been on a stag the day before. They're fully in stag mode. I had a gig the night before, so I didn't meet them. I just met them for the quiet drinks on my last day. And the sun was blazing. Sitting beside my mate Ryan, who can handle his pints. He dropping stuff in your drink. No, you? I was just drinking the same pace, and I should I shouldn't, shouldn't have. have. And I, and and it was going great. Knocking back Guinness, Guinness after Guinness. Not really a big drinker at all. Where'd you just go? Just like a tiny, tiny bar outside Newcastle. We tiny bar sitting out the back. Sun was blazing. It was unreal. Went for, I went to go good. for a piss. Yeah, went to go for a piss. Saw myself in the mirror and went. Oh fuck! Did you go? So home it was that? the day we shot the harp video. Did you? So we met at yeah, nine o'clock on Road. You, you were away, pretty much after that then. Just yeah. So, but we had. I got up with my son. Had breakfast about half six. Went and met you. Shot the video. Went home. Went to Asda. Did a big shop. And then went and met them. Nothing to eat. Did you tell her I'll be back in a couple of hours? No, no. I was. It was set aside as my day of. Right, it's such so a novelty did. for me now. It was right. like, he's drinking my day. You know, so it was set aside. Yeah. And I went to walk home. Probably four miles. And my mate was driving. He came up behind me. He was like, get, from get in the car. Got home. Sick. Everywhere outside, luckily. Got into the house. Went straight to sleep. Properly passed out. And I've never... It's been years since I've done that. And my wife brought me a basin. She looked at me. Brought me a basin. As soon as I, I was like, oh, I've been, I've done all Was she all judging my... you from the start? No, she was, she was good. She like, was really she... nice at that stage? Good throughout. Give me a bucket. I was like, oh, I've done it. I've been sick about 50 times outside, so I'm all good now. Soon she as I power hosing? As soon as I touched the bucket, sick into it 20, 30 times. And you had an MD, but yet you were sick and sick and sick and sick and sick. But nothing was coming up. Was there cards? No, nothing was coming up. You know when yeah, you people just... People go, there's always cards in it. I wasn't eating cards. Yeah, sweet corn. So somebody's fucking speaking to you about cards. <laughs> Who keeps giving me cards? Like I said the morning after, I was like, uh, it took, it took me three days to recover. Everything. It took me three days. When you were drinking water, it wasn't doing 
felt like your mouth was on fire like cardboard had to get a Chinese you know I was like a Chinese will throw me out nothing three day hangover but I don't I do, Chinese I, the wank that's <laughs> Chinese wank and a look at it that's a hangover cure yeah I know what you mean you don't even want to have the wank yeah it's yeah. a forced wank yeah but you're to, waiting to pick the Chinese up yeah um, <laughs> well you're wanking with the delivery driver going mate <laughs> 22 quid. What the fuck? I, I just, I, I don't see myself drinking every... I, I, I see myself having a drink. Don't see myself proper no, drinking I session again I ever. try to not do that. Every yeah. now and again I'll have a wee blowout. Yeah. But don't drink the way I used to. Like, I used no. to drink like a skinhead. There's definitely a, there's definitely an age where, and I've just hit it, where you, you can't. It's one of the things, if you keep doing it, yeah. and your body's used to it, yeah, yeah. it's grand, you can keep doing it right up until... You die from liver disease in yeah. 40s. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but there's a stage where you go, fuck that. Everything yeah. gets, even playing a football match now. Yeah, it yeah. takes me three days to recover from a yeah. football match. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's not even, it's any abuse of anything at all. Yeah, yeah. Do your body. Your body's just older and it's just like, I can't hurt this. Are you do? has has it just me or stand up stopped? I took two weeks off. I did roughly that. But then had nothing. But you anyway. had all that. You had that. I had a tour before yeah, that. Yeah. So if we were sit, if I was sitting in the house, I wasn't that busy yeah. at that stage because I yeah. was winding down and I'm watching you and I'm like, I should be out doing. But I've taken the time off and now it's over. I'm still off. Yeah. But I don't want to be off. There's just nothing happening. Yeah. No. There, there's no no offers until August. Like. Because the clubs have taken the summer off. Yeah. Kinda. But that's when I, now everybody's like, I want to. I'm home. Yeah. Home for the summer. I want to see stand up. I could offer a gig. I was meant to fly to Santa Paul to the day to do a gig, but it says no. Why? I just too short notice. What was it going to be an Irish bar? Yeah. No, it was an English bar. They wanted me to run around pulling all the Union Jacks down <laughs> and doing push ups with my knuckles in the middle of it. Ra- Rambo like, Live. I'm like the new fucking Labour Traction in Banador. <laughs> Sticky yeah, fingers. Stick fuck. Fingers. Get the fucking parky. <laughs> Come on, Pikey! <laughs> hey, come and see the fucking Irish Pikey pull the fucking thing. Do you um? Do you would you like that? Do you think it would have been good? I don't know. I've never done it before. I've had loads of offers to do. It was meant to do. I was telling the lads like thirteen different Irish bars all over Spain. Right. And uh, that would have been like a promo video for it, but it didn't. It's just not. It's going to happen, but it'll probably not happen till the end of August now. I'd be interested to see where, what the setup would be. It's going to be not what? a proper comedy venue. Yeah. It's going to be me standing sure. in front of kids drinking coke. Yeah. In an Irish bar. Yeah. That's what it's going to be like. There's no doubt about it. But that would be unreal as a trip. It'd still be good. Yeah. It'd still be good. I'd like to do the likes of like Barcelona and a few places in Spain but I don't think the touristy places don't get me wrong if we were all if there was something where it was like the one to pick all the boys to do it and we're doing a short set I'd love you it you say like. that and we're going to end up in raffling yeah well, we're going back <laughs> do you know don't get me wrong we're going I've back. never played I've never been on raffling do you want to do it yeah I've said it before I want to do it and then you never invite me we could do you it you never invite me well like it hasn't happened in about four years and then you never invite me well do you want to do it I said I want to do it right well do you want to do it then yeah well we'll do it right when do you want to do it? Just not this weekend. Oh, I just picked it for this. Ah, oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, we could definitely do it. Yeah. And do you know that even the best thing is doing it and then get a speedboat back straight after the set? That'd be good. Not right enough, special, we'll do it. Like, what do you mean get a speedboat back? So you know somebody that has a speedboat that can drive us back? Yeah. Is he like the local taxi man from Rafa? 100%, yeah. So he's not the ferry? Because the ferry's in at about bring, half seven. You can bring a car on the raffle, but you have to be disabled. So we should bring Willie Thompson. <laughs> I, knew, oh, I knew where that was going. Wait, only if you're staying for more than three days. You bring a car. You don't need a car. Yeah, you do. You don't need a car. There, you would never need a car. It's a sort of place Pierre you get Bartlett off... told me you would need a car. <laughs> it's a sort of place where uh, people will give you a lift. If they don't know you, if yeah. they see you walking, is there cars case. on the island? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. No, they're not taxed, they're either insured, but there's cars. They don't need to be. They don't even need to be belonging to me. We can borrow it. I wrote a car off. I tell you, on raffle. Yeah. We went over to do one of the gigs, and people we were staying in the B and B with, people that own it. Uh, I had stayed with them before, and you meet somebody once there, 
and they're they're a friend for life. Family. Like, they sort you out with whatever you need. And they saw us getting we were coming over for the gig. They saw what we're getting over. We land off the ferry. Uh, they come over with the car, and then the guys like throw me throw me a keys and goes. I'll walk back. You drive the boys back, and then wherever you want to show them on the island, just take the car. You know, just the car's yours. So I was like dead on. Boys couldn't believe it. They're like, "Do you know him?" I was like, "I met him once." So have the car. It's an old Peugeot. So put people's cases in. Drive it back to the hostel. Actually, we're standing. And then I said, "Does anybody want to?" I'll drive you around the island, show you a few places. So I think it was like me, Kieran, Woodsy, and Dave, or something, and Colin, and uh, a couple of the others went just to the hostel. They didn't want to go. And I was driving around, and there was stones. The wee windy roads, like the island's six miles by four miles, and I was going to drive into the lighthouse at the far side, single track roads, but it was full of pointy stones. And I was like, if I drive over this at normal speed, I'm going to burst the tires. So I was driving in first for about three miles, rev, and the roads are like that, and I'm really revving to get this car up. So I was revving in first for miles, and we're going up a hill. It was like something out of a film, right? We're going up a hill, real steep hill. And then all of a sudden, and I knew what it was straight away, timing belt away, I revved and nothing happened and the car just started to go back down the hill. The car whistled? Yeah. <laughs> that was Woodsy in the back. <laughs> the car started to go back down and I obviously was still able to use the brakes. I had to reverse my way down. And you know when the timing belt goes, you, you can barely, you can still steer but you can't really. It took us probably an hour to get the car back. Could have been a three minute journey. And I was like, this fella's giving me his car. I've rode it, rode it off like, uh, oh, the timing belt's gone. I'm gonna have to get to a mechanic on Bally Castle. And I drove back bright red. I was like, I'm so sorry. Uh, there's, I think the timing belt's gone on the car. I'll pay for any of the damage. Guy's like, we buy cars for 250 quid and sell them a scrap for 250 quid. So he's like, I'll just sell this tomorrow. Just get something else. And that was it. No you problem. You never given that one? No. No, I didn't want it. No problem. I can get you a car for 200 quid and you can bring it to Rafflin with us and give it to him. Yes. Why don't we do that? Will we just bring a car to the island and bring then leave it? a car it? for him. But I think he'll have one now. No, but we'll get him another one because it sounds like, <laughs> sounds like his cars don't last too long. <laughs> well, do you know what we should do? They have a football team there and they can't get anybody to play them. They have a Rafflin team. So we should have an international friendly. So when they have a raffling team, what do you mean? Like, who's all? Is there like a, a part? Everybody. With one leg and all? <laughs> yeah. <Arr! laughs> I'd be doing the defence. <laughs> There's like, yeah, they have a pitch and all. Yeah? Yeah, not 11 I said, but maybe six. So I think we should bar. Remember we got all the Northern Ireland kids for the Dungan and Swifts match? Hmm. I think we should just play them in an international friendly. Right. I think it'd be class. And then do a gig. We'll do it. Uh, Waterfront Hall. December. Front to all. Yep, December. On the tools Literally a couple of hundred tickets left. Yep. Flat. Like, didn't so just get it. a ticket if you're going because don't get the yeah, December. That's and go, December. Like, go. Yeah, that's yeah. December. Yeah, it's mad. It's, you're looking, I put the, the tour out and I'm sort of going, am I selling tickets here? And then I got a message the other day and it's just like. I love it when you don't check it and then you find it's going well. Yeah, and it was, yeah. it's like I hadn't checked it in two weeks and uh, he sent me it in and he was like, yeah, Antrim sold out you know, Newcastle where it starts, 20 tickets left. Class. And that's September, so. Yeah, you doing a cinema there? Yeah. That'll be class. That's such a good venue. Yeah. No, I've played that before. I wish I didn't have a ticket report about my LA show. Why? None. <laughs> what, four? Four? Yeah. Still four venue people six in LA. Mate. Well, maybe it's no, fucking Sean Kelly and his wife. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> you know? It's, uh, it holds 55, so we're attended the way there, kind of. No, less than that. Anyway. Um, if you put me in the bill, I know like 55 people in LA. <laughs> exactly 55. Exactly 50. Well, 54. One of them may, may be able to go. But it would sell then. It would sell. Um, tickets are on all my social media things. I should, should I put them on my website? Yeah. What's that? That'd be stupid not to, wouldn't it? Yeah. Tickets from LA show. Or my America shows. Yeah. Some of them are selling good, some of them are not selling good, let me be honest. But it's a build-up game. Oh, yeah. Like, let's face it, you're not going over to do a fucking stadium tour. No. It's, it's well, I hate to tell you, I think I've made a mistake, because I am. <laughs> it's going to be intimate. 
No, uh, end of it, it's in the stadium, but it's outside. Yes, it's in the pizza hut. It's in the hot dog stand. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and I need more. But you're trying to build up. That's oh, I know, hundred percent. Everybody 100%. knows what you're trying to do. And that's that's going to say, fuck Shane Todd really took a fucking down t- doing the fucking support for Kevin Hart in Ireland. They can't even sell a ticket in LA. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've sold four. Yeah. No hundred. Your poster. Four tickets in LA, bitch. <laughs> There's people move out to become actors and fucking end up working as janitors. That's what I'm gonna have to do when I'm there. See if I get the American term and then say caretaker. Janitor. Yeah. Have you ever done that in America? Like said something that you. Oh, said in America. T- Some I was in Asda last night, and there was a woman there with two kids in the same aisle, and the kid said something to her, and then the woman laughed, and turned to me, and went, "She just said to me the food the food aisle, how American." And I've never met a woman in my life, but I thought that was funny. And I didn't think what she was telling me was funny, but I think it's funny, funny. that she turned to me to tell me. Oh, uh, like, she needed an adult. Yeah. Like, can you believe? Yeah. And I could believe it, Yeah. but I just think it was, I just laughed. Well, uh, the worst thing I'd done was in Florida when we were clearing out the room at Disneyland. There was a wee guy who was the janitor of the fucking place. And I went out and I said, excuse me, mate, you haven't got a couple of black bags. And he fucking stared at me like it was, and I was like, and he went, do you mean a trash bag? <laughs> they don't call. Black bags, black bags. Yes. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. is not a term used over right. there. But there's so much. Well, they don't say toilet. People be like, you Lavender. want to go to toilet? Yeah, restroom or whatever. Pacer. Pacer. <laughs> Pacer. Pacepad. Pacepad. Where's the bog, big mate? Um... Yeah, so take it, we'll put that in the bi- the waterfront tickets in the bio. Um, cheers for coming on as always, mm-hmm. and we're going to set up. Should we? What if? It, what if I do do a stadium tour in LA? Will we set up a Wawa and we'll run it together? New Jersey? No. No. Okay. Cheers, Patty, for coming on. <laughs> All the best. Have a good one. Thank you.